and we are live. Welcome everyone. My name is Nikki Lopez of What's Your Elephant? And this is the art of the art of justice, art as making a, as a catalyst for social justice and collective action. And today we'll be having our showcase with a featured performance um, by a poet Adjare. We did a um, we did a workshop. Maybe when was the September 16th. And so as we get started, we are on Zoom. There is a link. If you're on the Facebook Live, there is a link to, if you want to join the Zoom, we are also on Facebook Live under Nikki Lopez Creative. And um, if you have questions, comments, feedbacks, feel free to uh, throw them in the comment section or join the Zoom and you could be a part of the conversation. Um, as well as if you watch this on the replay, feel free to um, leave some feedback, question, comments. There is a template for something that we did last week. And if you want to work on it on your own time and submit that work to be a part of the culminating exhibition, that would be super awesome. So I'm going to start the slideshow so we could kind of get things going. Let's see here. And uh, da, 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 da. do you see the, the full screen? Okay, so Hold on one second. Of course, there's a little. Sorry about that. So this is today's program. We're, um, the focus of this program is skills to affect change. Uh, the art of justice is talking is, is um, doing art, community dialogues and arts and presentations around four lenses of social justice. So this is uh, the third showcase in a series of four. So there'll be a, a, show, a virtual workshop in October, as well as a showcase and a culminating event in January. So we have with us today, the featured poet Adijare, and he is going to be, uh, talking a little bit about the workshop as well as uh, sharing a couple of his poems towards the end. So this project is called, my slides are being crazy. So this is the art of justice. The LA Lee Meisel YMCA Community Center and Nikki Lopez of What's Your Elephant presents the art of justice and art making as a catalyst for social justice and collective action. It's a, a series that features social justice themed presentations, artist led workshop across literary, visual and performing arts and culminating showcases that highlight some of the work created in the workshops while encouraging critical conversations about access, advocacy, agency and collective action. This program provides an opportunity for members of the community to create art in response to social justice themes that affect their livelihood and reflect their experiences. No formal art background is required to participate and all are welcome. So where we got this symbol, um, I thought it was really important to add. This is, this, um, the logo is, is um, comes out of a symbol, which is an Andigra symbol from West Africa. Um, and this symbol, Andika Karani, uh, chief of the Indigra symbols, a symbol of greatness, charisma, leader, and leadership. This symbol is said to have played an inspiring role in the designing of other symbols. It signifies the importance of playing a leadership role. So I thought this was really um, an important symbol to use with this project as we move forward. <sighs> So advocacy skills to affect change. That is the focus of the workshop and today's uh, presentation. Advocacy is a deliberate process of influencing outcomes so that the change can occur. It is necessary to be aware of a problem in order to develop a variety of approaches to create equitable advancement for the entire community. Developing this, um, Developing the skills to successfully advocate for one's self or behalf of others involves awareness, 
analysis of the different elements and their impact of the, on the whole. Following analysis, purposeful action plans must be designed to create a message, a way to express the message and address the target audience. Individual and group advocacy can create a path of equity. So this um, showcase is, is coming from the workshop that we had September 16th, where we had Adijare leading us through a, a written workshop, as well as we had um, a, a, a special guest speaker, Kathleen Dean, who is a filmmaker and producer. Um, uh, she is also an, uh, an advocate and uses film to get her message across about things that she feels needs to be changed within our community and society. She is also the director of the LA Lee YMCA's Black Box Victory Theater. So here we have a template um, of what we did in the workshop and I'm just gonna pass it on to Adejare to kind of like do a quick, quick little intro uh, about the workshop that we did. Uh, peace, y'all. Peace and greetings. Uh, thank you, Nikki, for that. Um, it's good to be back. <laughs> uh, some some people uh, names I recognize and I've seen before, and then uh, hopefully there's some new faces and names out there. So um, if you're with us, welcome and thank you for being here. Um, and and I just want to dive right in. So on the 16th, um, I had the opportunity to do this workshop, a, a, a writing workshop um, for What's Your Elephant and for this program. Um, and I utilize this poem here that you all can see on the screen, the template is up. Um, it's a poem that I wrote some, uh, some a while back uh, called, uh, What If We Win? And so what I ended up doing was taking this poem, removing all of the stanzas within it, and then just breaking it down and making it interactive, making it something that you can engage in, um, that you can follow along with and create along with, um, or you can deviate from and create your own, uh, your own special piece uh, from this. And so uh, throughout it, I go, I, go, I go along and I ask questions uh, in the place of what I originally had written um, because I think that there, there are things that we should consider, not just as creatives, not just as artists, um, but as people, you know, given that we share a planet and we live communally, we live amongst one another, um, we, we affect each other in big ways and in small ways. Um, and so I, throughout this piece, I asked, I asked specific questions about what type of world would be if you could dream up whichever type of world it is. Um, and so, you know, I ask, I ask you at the very beginning to tell me about your place, uh, what makes it significant, enchanting, and different than the world that we currently know. Um, and, and, you know, I ask those questions because in, in consideration of other people of our planet, of, of the world that we share, um, it's also important to consider ourselves in the midst of all of that too, right? Um, it's important to dream um, and it's, an, it's important to allow ourselves to go to places and to heights um, that we may not have been, or we might, have, we might be scared to get to, um, or just are apprehensive about going to in general. Um, and if you follow along through the template, I go on to ask all sorts of other questions about this dream world, this fantasy world that I, I would like um, participants to, to kind of put together um, and put into this poem. And so I ask different questions about, you know, what makes your place worth dreaming of? Uh, who has power in your place? Um, what happens in your place that doesn't happen here? Uh, questions like what's allowed in your place versus what's not allowed? Um, where can people go? What can people do? Um, what type of access do people have, right? Uh, are you alone or are you there with others? Is it a shared space? How much of the space is shared and what does that sharing look like? Um, all of these things are, are questions that come up whenever you're dealing with other people, which is day in and day out, right? Um, but it's important to ask these questions on a, on a wider frame because 
we create the world that we want to see, you know, as agents of change, as people who are dedicated to doing good work and doing work to make the world a better place or, or as best a place as we can make it, um, it's important that we do dream. It's important that we embrace those dreams um, and that we take the very best parts of them and attempt to, to materialize them and make them real. Um, and that's what this template is all about. And really that's what this poem is all about. This is allowing yourself to go to places that maybe the world would not. Um, and so it's my hope that folks, you know, have been able to use this template that have found it uh, transformative um, or powerful in some way um, to, to then move on and create for themselves whatever they feel is uh, their dream world and whatever life would look like um, should we win, uh, when we win. Uh, so um, it's been a pleasure for me to be able to present this and for me to do this workshop with you all. Um, but that's the poem and that's the template uh, that the workshop comes from. It is available to everyone still. Uh, so you can follow links to get to the actual template itself. Um, and I believe there's also a link to get to the actual written poem um, as well if you're interested in seeing that or hearing that again. Additionally, um, if you are interested in hearing the reading of said poem, um, I would encourage everyone to refer back to the, the original September 16th workshop um, because I do perform said piece there. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in hearing that performance again, definitely that's the place to go. And I would encourage everyone to go back to that workshop. Thank you, thank you. And I do see someone on, online that was in the workshop, but I don't know if they're ready to, if they um, are in a space to share their piece. Um, so um, if you are, let me know and we, um, you could go ahead and share it, but um, if not, that's fine too. Um, there is a link to the poem template. Um, there is also the, um, the link to both the poem and the template, and I will put that into the comment section. So, um, uh, and as well as if you go to Nikki Lopez Creative on Facebook and, uh, um, and YouTube, you will see the video for the workshop that includes, you know, the template, it includes the performance of the, the original poem that he, uh, Ade was talking about, and so... Hopefully you all can check this out. So, um, and also the, the link to the poem template, even though I'll put it on the comment section for those who may be just listening, if you go to whatsyourelephant.org and you should see the link for the Art of Justice, you could get to it there. You could also click on events and you click on that workshop and you will see all the, of the details for that as well as, um, as well as um, some more information about Ade. Uh, so this is one of the pieces, and this is actually not a poem, but it's very interesting that someone in the workshop, you know, art is about expression, right? So um, even if you give it parameters, people still have um, the autonomy to create something that feels poetic to them or feels like an expression to them. Uh, so this is a piece that was contributed by Rosemary. And um, I do thank you, Rosemary, if you're out there watching um, for submitting this work. She was a part of the workshop. And I believe she also uh, contributed her poem piece, but this is what she wanted to contribute for the showcase. Um, so as we're talking about uh, skills to affect change, um, one of the examples that I wanted to share is um, one of the partnerships that I'm a part of, which is Artists for Black Lives Matter. So if you've been on some of the Art of Justice showcases, we've shown some of these, um, uh, a few examples of some of the panels. So Artists for Black Lives Matter was established um, in 2015 as a safe space to express yourself around um, issues pertaining to Black Lives Matter, as well as any um, uh, life, uh, loss of life due to racial injustice. Because um, one of the artists who came up in one of the workshops is that wherever the minority group is, um, it, for that location, that is the targeted group. So if it's Black people, it's Black people. If it's Latin, it's Latin people. Um, so, um, and those are statistics that people could actually look up in their area and um, validate for themselves. So we give space for people to have discussions about things that they see and, and how to use your skills to 
um, to affect change, to talk about these issues. We go into schools, um, we do it by performance. We have, you know, so this is just like a little snapshot of we have uh, uh, people, artists and non-artists, um, both local to South Florida, as well as internationally have submitted work to this. Um, and there are visual pieces, some pieces are poetic pieces, there's songs, there's um, video pieces. So people using their voice, people using their skills, um, to address the change, right? Because one of the things that if you don't know the pro what the problem is, you can't even address it. So, you know, putting some imagery to what those issues are and challenges, as well as opportunities for change. And, you know, um, and even things like this with the art of justice, where we're coming together, we're bringing in different artists, they're visual artists, there's performing artists that are using their skills and talents and allowing people to create pieces but also it's not just for the aesthetic of art, right? Because art has impact. Um, there was someone on the um, from an organization that was a part of one of the showcases. And what came up in the conversation, they said, I'm bringing this back to my organization to see how we could implement those things. So just an example of how art is powerful, how art could be used as a tool to not just um, demonstrate what's going on in the world that are challenging, but also to give what's possible. Um, so those are some, uh, those are some examples um, of what we have. And so I'm just gonna check really briefly if anybody else online, um, uh, who, well, who's on the Zoom, would like to give an example of maybe how they use their skill sets um, to affect change. Um, definitely now is the time. I'm gonna check the, the Facebook really quickly to see if there, we have any comments from there. And I see... Um, Okay, we don't have any comments there. So, um, I'm just gonna get to, so, okay. So that's fine. If anyone has anything that's burning that they want to share, you could either jump in on the Zoom or you could post it in the chat or on Facebook in the chat as well. So uh, this is um, pretty much kind of concluding the slideshow. Uh, we do want to share the next event, which is um, going to be a workshop. This will be the fourth and final workshop is Solidarity Collectively Working for Change. So um, again, if you go to the website, you could RSVP. There is a link in the comment section um, for you to RSVP for that fourth workshop. Um, this workshop is going to be featuring um, a visual artist, Kaula Norudin, and it's also going to have a special guest speaker of um, uh, a writer and an artist, Sheree Gree, Greer. So they will be on um, October 14th at 6.30 p.m. And that is virtual, that's Eastern Standard Time. So that is definitely um, something you wanna uh, come out to. Please help to share the word, a word about that. And so just giving an example of where we're at with this series. This theory started in July 22nd of 2021, this year, and it culminates um, Saturday, January 8th, um, 2022. So, so far we've had um, a art making workshop and showcase about access and equity, agency and equity, advocacy and equity, and uh, this one here that we're having, the, the next one is gonna be solidarity. Um, so, and we're gonna, each one is gonna have, again, the showcase and we're gonna have the culminating event. So this program is brought to you by, um, is funded um, by Community Foundation of Broward. So um, support for this project has come from funds from the Community Foundation of Broward, Oakland Park Women's Club, David and Francie Harvitz Family Fund, Ann Adams Fund, and Mary and Alex McKenzie Community Impact Fund. So thank you so much for people who have has put their money behind uh, projects like these to get it out to the community. Um, and, and those who have 
been a part of the workshops or been a part of, you know, um, the showcases and sharing it. I also want to sh um, thank you all too, because, you know, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. So we have a pandemic going on, um, safe spaces and keeping everyone socially distanced, as well as the YMCA, which is getting rebuilt in the community of Cistrunk, um, that is still currently under construction. So right now we're virtual. And so eventually, um, things will move into the black box theater once we're open. So thank you all. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I'm zoomed out. So I really appreciate everyone who participates, who listens, who shares, and who is a part of this journey. So you could get more details about um, the art of justice on whatsyourelephant.org slash the art of justice. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a minute. So um, let me just check the chat real quick. Um, oh, driving but listening. No worries. No problem. Uh, thank you for being here, Donna. Uh, Donna was a part of the workshop. She did have a poem, but I don't want her to drive and do the poem. So um, we're going to be turning this over to... Uh, the featured um, poet. And I just want to say a couple of words, um, a little intro about Adejare McMillan. Uh, he's an author and poet combining transformative justice practice with clinical counseling techniques. Adejare McMillan is professionally known as the transformative, transformative justice therapist. I love that. <laughs> uh, this is a South Florida-based speaker, poet, an activist currently pursuing a PhD in family therapy at NSU and specializes in race and equity, sexuality, addiction, and men's issues. So I'm going to turn it over to the featured artist to uh, do his thing. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and thank you again for everybody that has been able to join, um, folks that have been able to sign on through Facebook, um, you know, if you weren't able to get onto the Zoom, um, appreciate you being here. Um, I'm not even going to hold y'all up too much. I'm just going to get real started. Um, but before I get into this first piece, I, I, have to, I have to speak on it. I have to say a couple of things because um, it's just so important to all of us. You know, this first piece uh, that I am going to read is not in any of my published books. This is a, a piece that is intended to be in book number three, which is uh, being produced right now. Um, so this is kind of exclusive because it's not something that I perform anywhere. Um, I have maybe read this poem and shared it aloud um, maybe one time <laughs> ever. Uh, so um, this piece is, is it's inspired by Florida. Um, it's inspired by this land. You know, the fact that we live in a vacation spot every single day of our lives as residents here. It's inspired by the fact that this land holds history that goes back well beyond our arrival here. It, it's inspired by the blood that was shed and spilled on this land. It's inspired by um, you know, the, the, the once abundant Tequesta Indians who, or Tequesta First Nations people, excuse me, who inhabited this land. Um, it's inspired by the Seminole tribe um, and the major uh, First Nations tribes that inhabit this land still um, and hold claim over this land. Um, and it is inspired by ultimately the folks who have shown up and have not paid attention to any of that history. The folks who show up and crash and bang and slam and pound and make noise and change and sometimes destroy um, what naturally was, what naturally is and things that maybe should still be around. Um, and so this piece is called Kumbaya um, and, and this is it. You know, one day again, we will know protections embrace. 
we will know security's melody, what it means to not consider treading lightly. We will know what it is to be in the fullness of ourselves, to be both free and fluid within space, the way you move and shift and take space, the way you arrive alien and adamant in your being. Crash landing and claiming residency. Do you even know the history? The stories held in the places you now call home, every legend soaked into the soil. Can you feel the magic of blood spilled in righteous battle? The ancestry suspended in the atmosphere, filling the corners of your colonization. Can you feel the resistance, the damnation in our stairs, the demands to be acknowledged? Do you even know the sanctity of what you claim? That no matter your redevelopment, we will remain. You be affluent and yet still you be foreign. Listen to the land, the way it protests your delinquency, how waters rise up to wash you away, how your fracking clangs loud in the tones of blasphemy. You be affluent and yet still you be foreign. You be captor claiming innocence, rank and sour in the guilt of your treachery. No whitewashing will cover. You cannot belong where you were never welcome, no. Here, you be intruder, you be invasive species, you be smiling imposter, posing as friend, you be Judas, dropped in a purity of the children of the sun. You be see-through, and here your gluttony gives you away. Here, you be gatekeeper with a fattened belly, your stay be temporary, and one day we will sing. One day, we will bring harmony back to these hollowed grounds. Um, <laughs> so that's Kumbaya. Um, you know, this, this, this poem is just, it's about the things that, that the land has lost. It's about, you know, the stuff that gets looked over, the history that doesn't get told and is not taught or retaught um, to to us and to our children in our schools and our lives. You know, this is it's it's a testament to the things that we really should be paying probably the most attention to, um, the areas that should that should garner the the majority of our attention, and the things that we should really be holding sacred and near and dear to us and to the land and to our hearts, um, and so. Kumbaya is, is ironically named because it's something that I think we're still struggling to achieve. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're talking about advocacy, and advocacy is like it's one of those hard ones for me because I can't just I can't just talk about something. You know, if it if it bothers me enough, if it if it itches and it, and it grinds against my gears, I gotta do something a little bit more than just talk about it. And you know, as an artist, as a creator, what we do is we take all of the things that touch us, that hit us, that 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 keep us up at night, and we we have to um, process them and and digest them and synthesize them and turn them into something palatable, something something worth paying attention to, something usable, something that the world can can grow and go forth with. And so my way of doing that is 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 through poetry, it's through writing, it's um, using the written and spoken word. Um, because we as Black people are an oral people, um, and we pass down stories through storytelling. Um, and so I, it, 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 this just felt particularly important for me to speak on, not because I'm some huge environmentalist or, you know, some, some like massive nature guru where I know anything and everything about what's happening with our world and our environment and our planet, but it, it felt particularly important for me because this is where I live. Like, this is where we be. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that we know where we are, not just, not just in, 
you know, in the reality of real time, but knowing where we are in terms of what has happened here, like what's the history of this place, of this land? What makes this place significant? Why was this place sought after? Why is it still sought after now? You know, these are, these are the things that, that we should be thinking about and the things that keep us connected to not only what has happened, but what is continuing to happen now because this land is being destroyed now through development and through, through lack of care. I'll, I'll just blanket statement and say lack of care. Um, and so, you know, this is, this is stepping into that advocacy vein of speaking about something that's near and dear to me, but, you know, it's, it's more than that. It's more than that. It's, it should be near and dear to us all. It should be significant to us all. Um, there are two more pieces that I'd like to share with y'all, and, and one is around queer Black love. Um, and then the other one is around uh, police brutality and, and the murders of uh, Black people with impunity uh, in this country. Um, and so I think because I want to end off on a positive note, um, I will share Black magic with you all. Um, and Black magic is this, this poem. Um, I would, I would consider it the principal piece for my second book, uh, Getting Through. Um, it's probably the piece that like sparked the second book's creation. Um, and it's a piece that makes me very angry. Like I gotta, <laughs> we all have like, as creatives, we all have, have that thing that like takes us to a different place. And, and as an activist and someone who has been in the struggle, um, you know, for the sanctity of black lives, um, this is that thing for me. This is the thing that takes me to a different place. Um, and it's not just a poem to me. Um, this, it's a, this poem, and I say it in the poem, it's a declaration, it's an open letter, um, it's an indictment. Um, it is, for me, in my head, all of the things that I would like to do within the existing systems that maybe we don't get the chance to do. So this is Black Magic. This is an open letter to those who appropriate, the same those who associate Blackness with negativity, to those gifted with a place of authority, yes, yes, the majority of you. This isn't to just a select few sheep. This is to the herd. This is to falsified inclusivity. To everyone who objects to my people's reality, this is an open letter, a declaration, an exclamation, a proclamation not to be confused or misconstrued. This is straight, no chaser. We've been holding on. We've been unsteady and pent up bent and misshapen, you have us mistaken, but you're afraid. You rip our souls from our bodies and reserve your right to remain silent. You retreat into fabricated innocence and tumble backward when we boil over. Sometimes you don't even wait until we're right. You pick us off prematurely, pluck the low hanging fruit, fiddle us in that way that you always do between your trigger fingers, stretched lifeless between drawn horses at the ends of your nooses through loopholes in your laws. You fashion us as ornaments and place us on display. Too many of you refuse to feel what or how we feel so the evidence has been clear. Our vision has just been clouded by struggle by exhaustion, clouded by fear. But I believe you refuse to fathom black magic. It seems you're committed to misunderstanding, to backing us into corners, to coercing us into compliance, to standing on our necks, listening, listening for our fading breath. It seems you're committed to forcing our hand. You see, you bring flashbangs and riot gear for peaceful gatherings and call it justified. 
as sisters, mothers, and others cry, enduring simultaneously, straddling loss while still striving to live. And these days, my people gather, goosenecked and gawking, both in belief and the lack thereof, some lost and looking into other souls, seeking solace in our own obsidian beauty, black magic bubbling over, disgruntled bodies, doing rain dances and last ditch efforts to wash injustice away, chanting in the streets for universal guides to give us peace as you declare in authoritative shades of blue and paint us thug, hooligan, jigaboo, with a broad brush and a narrow view and you'd rather sit with yourselves. Say that it's all a lie, claim all lives matter as if even in our deaths we haven't survived, you tear away at our humanity with serrated teeth, hollow tipped bullets and hollowed out notions of who we are or could be, but you see us. Children of the sun, casted in molds of African gold, constructed of black breast milk and honey, silken skin from blue black midnight majesty to sub-Saharan sand tones, forged in the flames of our ancestors, the wombs of our mothers like ovens, bronze capsules of containment, hell hot portals from where greatness emerges, we, we being gifts of the most high, we, with a universe in each eye and sweetened dreams of freedom held tightly and our clenched fists warriors rising from beneath unassuming beauty, harboring a fury you could never truly be ready for and you're afraid. You're deficient in scrambling, armored up and hunkered down awaiting our hailstorm, bracing yourself for our barrage, hoping we never fully abandon complacency, convincing us to consider compassion while grasping at control with your free hands, demanding that we keep ours raised, commanding submission, and failing, firing into our darkness indiscriminately, protecting your flimsy perspective, serving as executioner. Don't you know, don't you know that trauma travel that translation of suffering rests in our makeup that we have survivor etched into our bones that although you hurt our healing lies in our resistance, our existence becoming a testament that although you have attempted rewriting our stories, we have not forgotten that oration has retained both the royalty and the rage. We are angry and we are able rubbing away your fantasies of our submission, refusing to sit down the duty to fight for our freedom, resting heavily on our backs, hurling us forward. We are divinely driven and you can't fathom black magic being freely. So you are afraid of us. You are afraid of me and I see you. Coward, I see you. Mm. <sighs> Sorry, y'all. I just need to leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's definitely one I gotta listen. They're all beautiful, but I gotta listen to that one again. I'm gonna listen to that one on the replay. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, God, so many of us have been killed mm. and they still killing us. They running us down with horses and whips. We can't even cross a border. Mm. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but it makes me so mad. It makes me so mad. And I, I wasn't expecting to do this today. I wasn't expecting to do this right now, but Jesus, man. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. I don't understand why brown skinned people can't be in peace. I don't understand. I don't understand why black people gotta fight, gotta scrap, gotta struggle for everything, for everything, for breath. Black people should not have to struggle for breath. 
for the right to be. I just don't, you know, as an artist, as a creative, it's like, you know, we, we carry the dreams, you know what I'm saying? Like we speak, we speak truth to power. We speak life into things that like people struggle with all the time. We, 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 we give word and we give sounds to things that other people are not able to describe. And even with that piece, I still, I still can't wrap my full mind around why we can't just be. And the shit breaks my heart breaks my heart. Mm. We shouldn't have to tiptoe. We shouldn't have to make, we shouldn't have to choose parts of ourselves. We shouldn't have to make decisions around which bits of us we're going to show today. You know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't have to play that game. Mm -hmm. And yet still we do. Day in and day out with no break, with no mercy. And I just don't understand. I don't understand what it's gonna take for 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 the rest of the, the 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 world, for the rest of the planet, for for any and everybody that doesn't see us with dignity, that doesn't see us as human, that doesn't see us as worthy. I don't I don't understand what it's gonna take for that to change. But but we gotta keep trying, right? We gotta keep yeah. going, keep going. Um, and holds in space for each other when you know times like this like you know we get tired you keep doing it you keep talking about it and it's okay every emotion about it is so justified and valid you know and that's why it's not just doing this work but also supporting each other in this work and yep. Yeah, holding some virtual space, physical space, whatever type of space, but just hold that space and hold, you know, I see you, I hear you, I'm with you. Oh, um, wow. I saved this piece for last because it's a deeply personal piece for me. <laughs> Um, I mean, these are all personal pieces for me. I've written them all. They're mine. Um, they're mine and they're ours collectively, right? Um, but this piece for me is is it's about identity. It's about it's about taking agency. It's about advocating for oneself. It's about you know speaking truth to to your own power. Um, it's about exposure. Mm -hmm. It's about being a hundred percent of you regardless of what might be going on, regardless of what other people got to say about it, regardless of how the world may feel about it. It's, a, it's, it's about authenticity and it's about just being real. Um, and so this is for every, every queer person, <laughs> any, anyone that either does or doesn't fall under the rainbow umbrella you know, regardless of what acronym, you know, you might file yourself under or, or what letter, you know, in the LGBTQ plus alphabet, you, 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 you put yourself or, you know, where you decide to call yourself home, you know, this is, this is for us, the people that get ridiculed, the people that get mocked, the people that get questioned for loving who we choose to love, how we choose to love them, when we choose to love them. Um, and uh, most of all, this piece is for him, which is what it's called, for him. Hmm. I only make it look easy. I only make it look easy watching you move, hiding a rapture in the stillness of my mouth keeping hushed, crumbling beneath the weight of bearing witness, you, loud in every way I wished I could feel, you, writing love letters across my chest from afar, branding me in your radiating heat, you, waterboarding me in your gaze, your gaze, an ocean's worth of secrets I'd willingly get lost in. I only make it seem simple quelling my curiosity when you come around. 
my tongue becoming a toddler in the presence of you, searching the crawl spaces of my mouth, seeking everything and nothing, searching for God or God knows what. I wonder if anyone else notices the way you change the atmosphere, the way your shallow smirk commands compromise how your million megawatt smile brings the dead back to life. I try to keep it discreet. The way spirits dance in the residue of your aura, the way your brown skin glistens in the autumn morning sun, the way you turn me on and leave me there. Waxing and waning between satisfaction and surplus with labored breaths between stolen glances of you, butterfly secrets jammed in my throat, shuffling to the cadence of your respiration, struggling to breathe while tracing the silhouette of you, turning you into a moving constellation noosed by lust the world considers perversion, a criminal border crossing, an illegal migration of fascination. I wonder if this is the first sight love others speak of. I wonder if this is the flavor of forbidden fruit, if you are living mythology. And I chase my own fleeting speech. I carve space in my whatever the hell is happening, enough space for you to reach if you wanted, for your strong arm to wrap under into welcoming embrace. And my tongue, my tongue becomes a war-torn country, cheeks stained in blood-red desire, my body red-orange with the slow burn of being left in your wake, a coal fire furnace full of unspoken sweet nothings, sweet treason my insecurity will not allow free, some say so but I am convinced that you are anything but a phase. You, with your waterfall shoulders. You, with that risen chest that arrives before the rest of you, arms like pillars worthy of holding the heavens high. I only make it sound good. The way you quietly send me confirmation. The way you remind me that my fantasies are the greatest things that I have. I remember then that you refuse to lean into love your body a temple to a God who does not believe, a vessel of potential stifled by human insecurity, a deep amber imprisonment I still can't wait to get my hands on and I only make it seem simple. I hold my desires tight, keep them just beyond the light and remind myself that both this and you are dreams, that my tongue becoming a toddler in the presence of you, searching the crawl spaces of my mouth, seeking everything, everything and nothing, searching for God or God knows what I wonder if anyone else notices. I wonder if anyone sees the way you change the atmosphere. I wonder if anyone sees the way your shallow smirk commands me. Mm. I love them all. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. Thank you for letting me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's yes, a yes. blessing and a privilege. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think all, all three pieces that you selected is so relevant and so needed. And, you know, just brings a whole nother layer to what you know to the work because people have we you know sometimes we have this one track of what social justice means <laughs> you know <laughs> um so it's so always i'm always appreciative when an artist or participant brings in another point to kind of broaden our views on what that looks like and what that work looked like you know and so i really appreciate that awesome thank you Oh, we have uh, Olano oh, saying, love that piece. I love that work. It's amazing. We need more. <laughs> Absolutely. Appreciate it, thank you. <laughs> so where, yeah, so um, I know you put it in the chat, but for some people who may not see the chat, where can people find more of your work and to connect with you? Mm, um, okay, so my work lives with me. Um, if you follow me already on social media, then you know this to be true. Um, 
I am active on social media. I post statuses all the time. I post bits and pieces of poems all the time. Every now and then I might drop a poem in the middle of a Facebook status bar, like just because. Um, so I would encourage folks to follow me first and foremost. Um, I have a professional website. I have a professional Twitter account. Um, and uh, the my handle, I'm uh, sorry, is uh, at the tj therapist which would be at the transformative justice tj therapist um so you can follow me in those places and then you can also um take a visit to my professional website it is www.thetjtherapist.com um you can read more about me about what i do professionally in the world of psychology and in therapy um i am working as a therapist in south florida have been for a few years um, but you can also uh, follow my art and track my art through there as well. Um, I have both of my books on sale and on my website under the product tab. Um, so you can go there and then it will take you directly to links where you can order um, and have them shipped directly to you should you so, you know, should you so want them. Um, and then as far as uh, upcoming things and, uh, What's in store for book three? I would say definitely follow me on Instagram at the TJ Therapist. I post um, things that I'm doing there professionally as well as artistically. Um, so yeah, that's where you can find me. Uh, you can also email me too at the same handle, the TJ Therapist at gmail.com. Should you have anything um, direct that you want to send my way, any questions, any comments, any um heck any proposals um if you want me to show up anywhere to be at events or anything like that definitely that would be the way to contact me um fastest so please do don't be shy absolutely thank you thank you so much um and i see alana's on here i don't know if you want to say a word or two alana if you haven't if you haven't been following the art of justice she was the featured performance um a couple of weeks ago so and you, again you can find it on facebook under nikki lopez creative or on youtube at nikki lopez 19 and that's nikki with 1k <laughs> so i just wanted to say thank you Adeng. thank you thank you thank you i so needed this space this morning and all three of your pieces mm. wow like shifted my whole energy and I thank you so much for sharing everything continue to share um I do have one of your books and I like I said I secretly stalk you I love your work um continue to do what you're doing in the community and also for yourself as a creative I completely can understand as we bear witness but not only do we bear witness we hold and we feel everything in, in this life experience. So to be able to bear witness, feel it, and then share. I thank you for that. Keep doing the work. I thank you. Same. And back to you as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm like, Alana, don't you gonna make me cry. I'm holding it together. I gotta hold it. One of us can't cry. That's gonna be me. <laughs> I got some tears on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I echo everything Alana says. It's just so needed. I love it. I love all of it. Thank you. Alana. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, we're going to wrap up today. It's a, you know, quick little, um, you know, this space, you know, it's meant to showcase the work we're doing It's meant to showcase community who has done work. And it's also meant to have a dialogue, you know, and sometimes people are active and have a lot to say. And sometimes people just kind of want to chill or sit back or watch it on a replay. And all of that's good. So um, this is available on Facebook. This is going to be available on YouTube after it gets uploaded. So people can still participate. So um, if you are a visual artist or performing artist and you want to have some of your work in the next, we have one more showcase coming up and then we have the culminating event that we'll be planning for January. So, and 
you know, the YMCA is still being built. So it seems like this may be a virtual event, um, but there is an open call for artists. So if you have work to display uh, digitally, if you want a short video, um, if you're an artist and want to participate, if you are a non-artist, or even though everyone can be creative in their own way, if you don't identify as an artist, a professional artist, there, you know, there's still three workshops that you could watch the video, follow along, create a piece of art, and upload it. If you go to whatsyourelephant.org um, and you click on the Art of Justice link, you will see a link for the call for artists. And that link is for any professional artists, any non-artists, any participants um, in this. So feel free. Um, the last um, of this uh, series will be in January. So we have one more showcase um, and then the virtual um, culminating event. Um, so you still have time to submit work and to participate as well as, you know, my request, you know, anyone watching this live or the replay, please, please share this work. So this is important work, it's art, is advocacy, is voices, is community, is community building, is community sharing, um, is, is people expressing different points of view, is us showing that we're not a monolith. Um, so this work is really, um, this is not necessarily the type of work, not everybody's running out to be like, oh, wait, I was about to age myself and say an old group, what's the current group? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? If it was a Beyonce performance, <laughs> I Belle the road. That's what came to mind. Um, I'm mm. 31, according to Marley, to my son. So, but what I'm saying is that all art is valid. Some art is more easier, accessible, or more like people are going to jump to a performance thing. And this is work is, you know, art as advocacy, advocacy as art. Um, uh, so these are discussions. So, you know, we need the community to help and support. And one of the ways you can do that, that is free99.com, sharing the links, sharing the graphics when it comes up, sharing the promotions about it, sharing the videos. Um, that is really important to not just the work that we're doing, but everyone involved in creating this work. Um, uh, this, the Community Foundation is supporting this work and this also shows them the need for this type of work and funding more of this type of work within the community. And, you know, I mean, some of the challenges is, is it virtual, but also some of the opportunities is that is virtual. That means anyone on the planet can access this work. Anyone on the planet can be a part of this work. Anyone on the planet can contribute to this work and participate and show up. So, you know, there's challenges and then there's opportunities within those challenges. And so my request to anybody who watches this, please, please share this. Share this for me, share this for Ade, Alana, share this for the community, share this for, you know, for the work that's being done. Um, uh, this project is um, uh, collaborating with What's Your Elephant. So What's Your Elephant is a movement that uses the arts to create safe spaces to address anything unspoken by things like this, by art exhibitions, by chats. And so if you want to find out more, if you go to the What's Your Elephant website, if you go to What's Your Elephant on Instagram or Facebook, you'll find out all that information. Alana also has Creative Uprising, and if you could just take a little quick second to share about what Creative Uprising is too, as well. Yes, so um, Creative Uprising was my guinea pig, is my guinea pig, I should say. Um, in, back in 2007, my father transitioned, and during that time, I was a therapist, and I worked primarily with um, children that you know were either perpetrators or victims of sexual abuse. And <clears throat> After my father transitioned, I experienced so much um, transference working with my clients. I was, you know, going through grieving and I had to take a step back. And what helped me was really tapping into my creative juices. I wrote more, I sang more, I painted more and I shared it. Um, and I noticed through that, you know, through, through going through that creative journey, it helped me 
deal with my grief and deal with um, some things that I needed to do to heal and continue to heal as an individual, um, as a black individual in this country, right? Gotta add that. Um, so sometimes we, we tend to look outside for, for you know, validation or we look outside for healing. You know, this word is being used a lot. We look outside for balance and creative uprising helped me learn that all of those things that we seek out, we have within ourselves and that our creative energy is, 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 is important. It can not only create movements, it can create connections, and it can help us heal as individuals and as a community. So what I do is I still, you know, have on my therapist hat, but I use um, different modalities as far as expressive arts therapy. I also use movement as a way of helping people to become their own healer and address certain issues that they may not addressed in a typical um, therapeutic setting. I love working with marginalized groups or groups that's been pushed to the side. I also love working with individuals that are creative, not really wouldn't identify themselves as an artist or kind of are still, you know, tiptoeing around the issue. Um, I work with kids in the DJJ. I've had clients that have traumatic brain injury, all populations, anybody that feels like, you know what, I'm pushed to the side and I really don't feel like I belong in a community, right? I think it's so important, not only as a creative, but as a person to be vocal about what we see in our world. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that it is our purpose. Each one of us make sure that when we leave, when we transition, that we've made this place a better place, that we've added to to its growth, to its beauty, to its, to its evolution. And that in a nutshell is what Creative Uprising is. I work with, like I said, all different populations and allowing people to really explore their creative energy and tap into that and create change. Thank you, thank you. That's it. <laughs> it is so interesting because I think with all three of us, there, there was something that sparked the work that we're doing or deepened the work that we're doing. Um, I've shared on different other platforms, some, you know, some of the things that brought me to What's Your Elephant and kind of, you know, not, you know, you know, there's art, there's healing, there's therapy, there's, there's safe spaces and all those things. But it reminded me, there's a quote um, by Rumi, the wound is the place where the light gets in. You know, so sometimes, you know, like when you said it, it's just like, oh, what's that quote? Um, so it just kind of, I think, really kind of resonates with me in this work, with what we're saying in this work. And, you know, also like the challenging things that people see in the world, like we could be a witness to it, but we could also take an action. It could be different actions. It could be protesting, you know, protest comes in all types of ways. You could march on the street, you could learn the government and get in there and be a lobbyist or, you know, you know, someone who, um, you know, impacts change on the inside. It could, it could be putting in art. It could be writing a poem. It could be writing a song. It could be creating space for others, right? So sometimes you may not know like, hmm, what can I contribute? I don't know what can I do, but wait, I got a space, I got a venue, I got a platform, I got some dollars, I got some talent, I got some skills. So, and that, like you said, you know, when we, while we're here, you know, we have breath in our chest mm -hmm. as we're struggling to breathe, <laughs> mm -hmm. we can do something, no matter what the scale is, no matter what that small little step is, if everyone's taking one little tiny step, that's mm -hmm. going to move mountains at some point, right? We can't take these tiny steps and go nowhere. Yeah. There's going to be movement. There's yeah. going to be that ripple that makes that wave of change that we want to see and, and be an example of those things. So, you know, I'm excited for these type of programs. This is the wheelhouse of the work that I do. I love working with the people that I get to work with um, to kind of further this work and collaborate and find different ways to express that. And hopefully not just showcase what we're doing, 
but inspire, but not just inspire because you could be on your couch inspired and sit there all day, motivate to some action. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm hoping- Yes, you know, taking action. <laughs> yeah, taking action, not just, you know, because I could watch an inspirational video and click off into the next inspirational video. I'm like, ooh, I'm inspired, but I'm gonna sit mm -hmm. this tea on this couch. Like <laughs> get off the couch and do something. Or, you know, do something on the couch. But the, the point is to have some form of action. Everyone has access mm -hmm. to some form of action. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter your gender, your sexuality, your, your income, your social, you know, your, your place in society. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter if you're- Or your conditioning or... too. Because <laughs> I, think, I think we've been conditioned to think, you know, we're, we, we're helpless and that we can't do anything and that, that this monster is too big for us to, 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 to attack or to battle. But it's, it, I think once we realize like what you said, Nikki, do what you can do, mm -hmm. but take action. It doesn't have to be, you know, you becoming president or you becoming, you know, a government official, but there's something within your life that you can do creatively, you know, you know, that you can do out of the box that you, that you can inspire, like you said, a ripple effect. And I think there's so many people um, that feel hopeless, that feel helpless, that feel like they can't do anything. And, you know, I believe that we all have this spark within us we all have it no matter how dim it may be in that moment or in any moment we still have that spark and we need to tap into it and take action no matter how big or how small do something yeah <sighs> so with that being said I, I don't know if you have any final words but we're gonna wrap this baby up <laughs> Yeah, I do actually. Um, I've been thinking about this a lot and I'm like, I'm really, I've been avoiding talking about it because I don't have all of the proper words. And for me, and, and if, if you're a writer, if you're a poet, if, if words are your, are your thing, then you get it, right? I don't like to speak on things in full when I, when I haven't yet hashed or found all of the words, mm -hmm. but I can't do this today with everything that has transpired in the last less than a week and not talk about the power of black womanhood, not talk about the influence that Haiti has had on, on us all, um, especially as American citizens who are, are living off of the work that's done by migrant workers and that's done by, you know, by, by folks that are at the lowest rungs of society, you know, the maids, the cooks, the washers, the bus drivers, the janitors, the, 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 the so on and so forth. All of these people that come from these, these places, these countries that are so, so much less fortunate than we are to be living here um, but I was, I was brought to poetry by a black woman. I was brought to poetry by, by someone who was serving, who was giving to other people. And, and, and I, I, my feeling is that, you know, these workshops and the premise and everything that we're talking about is not just, it's not just something to do. You know, it's not, it's not just a cause to take up or a crusade to get behind. It's, this is, this is our lives. Like this is a response. We have a responsibility. We have a duty to, to step up and to give credence to these things and to, and to fight against the literal evils that our people are coming up against. You know, it's not, it's not just, primetime news <laughs> and, and what's popular in the headlines. Like this is literally our history that we are living and breathing right now. You know, these are the things that in 40 years, our great grandchildren are going to be learning about and asking about mm -hmm. 
And it's up to us to be able to have the type of story to tell them that goes, you know, we got up and we did. We got up and we tried. We got up. And not just, well, it happened and there was nothing that we could do about it. Because that's, to me, that's not an acceptable response. There's always something exactly. to do about it. There's always a choice to be made. No matter, no matter what access you have or don't have, at the end of all things, as long as you are living and breathing and thinking and, 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 and moving creature, you, you have choice. You are imbued with choice, which is an opportunity to do something other than nothing. And so my I, final word, my last statement, my closing for this is, is, is you know, I'm, I'm not going to beg you to do something for me or because it's popular or because it's what's hot right now. Activism is like hot and trendy right now. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you to look at yourself look at the weight that you hold in your world, look at the ripples that you cause when you move, and I'm going to say, you do something about it. Do something about it that feels good for you, because doing nothing is not acceptable. It's not acceptable anymore. It never has been, and it damn sure isn't now. And we, gotta, we have to start moving. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, your families, the people that you love. Understand and remember that you can't pour from an empty cup. So do what you need to do to make sure that you are well. And then do what you feel you need to do to make sure that the world is well. So that we can all be well together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I say, I say. Thank you, Nikki. Yes, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome and thank you. Thank you, Alana, for being here. Thank um, you. Mm. <laughs> Everything works out and do how it's supposed to happen. <laughs> exactly. There are no accidents. Yeah. No. People are really going to enjoy this replay. They missed out. But on the replay, y'all. Tap in, take some action, no matter how small. We, we can't just be sitting on the sidelines spectating. It's time to take action, y'all. Yes. So I know it's a rainy Saturday here in South Florida. I don't know where um, everyone's going to be watching from or hearing from, but it's a Saturday afternoon. Um, this is just a really a treat for me. I mean, I had to be here, right? But also it's a treat. It's definitely a treat for me to be here and in this space with both of you and, um, and everyone who's watching virtually, who's going to watch it on a replay, um, who's going to listen to it once it hits the, the podcast. Um, I'm grateful for each and every energy, vibe, listen, share, participation, all of that. It's just like, so thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm going to say, enjoy the rest of your afternoon and I will see you all later. Peace. Bye.